Welcome back to Historic Investments. Today, we're going to talk about a very interesting Nazi-era high power, the modified holster that came with it, and the ensemble of capture papers, all of which can add considerably to the value of your purchase. So if you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that in mind, let's jump in. First of all, let's take a look at the pistol itself. For those of you who are familiar with high powers of this area, you'll notice that it's got typical late war features. It's got the internal extractor, it's got the thumbprint slide, and it's got lots of machining marks all over it. Of course, you want to know, is the finish original? Yes, the finish in this case is original. And is it all matching? Well, let's take a look at the cardinal number, which is 41,552B. And the last few digits are repeated on the exposed barrel hood, see 552B, and the frame, 552B. The next thing you want to know is, is does the gun have the correct proofs on it? So let's flip the gun over and take a look. So here we notice the uh, usual address, but what we do not have in this case is we do not have the usual WAA 140 proofs. In fact, this area is curiously devoid of proofs. What do we have instead? Well, you will see a pair of Eagle end proofs, both on the slide and frame. Those are commercial proofs. That would suggest that this gun, even though it's got features of a Nazi occupation pistol, it was likely assembled, proofed, and sold commercially right after World War II. That would also go along with the magazine, which does not have any um, WAA-140 markings on it, but the magazine, if you look at the spine, has no markings on it whatsoever, but it does have the military or the World War II era aluminum follower. So with that in mind, let's turn our attention to the holster. Here's the holster that came with the pistol. For those of you familiar with Nazi era weapons, you know immediately that this was not the holster customarily issued to a Nazi high power. What is it? Well, it's the holster that was usually attached to the uh, board stock for the Belgian army or the pre-war high powers. It's got uh, four rivets here that uh, better secure this reinforcing plate. And when we open it up, we can see not only do we see some ownership attribution here that's nicely inked, but we can also see the indents for the rivets that were previously used to secure this holster to the stock. It was a three-point securement, two rivets on the inside here and a third rivet right there. Here you get a better view of the uh, pouch for the uh, spare magazine and the back of the holster is largely unremarkable. Again, you can see it's three points of attachment two inside the holster and one at the base. Let's turn now to the capture documents. So let's start looking at the capture papers after first uh, reviewing the serial number of the gun, which is 41552B, and the person, you can see Private First Class PFC Louis Abello, El Bello. So let's look at the uh, first capture paper. Well, here we go. The first capture paper is just a very small certificate it mentions that it's Private First Class Albello. It mentions the serial number of the gun, which is 41552. Well, this says G. Well, the pistol was B, but G, B, well, it's pretty close. The important thing you should look for is it's got a fair amount of age-related wrinkling, and it's got faded ink, and the ink is not from a ballpoint pen or a Sharpie, and um, there are a few just minor losses and fading as you would think appropriate. Of course, you've probably noticed this is a 9mm Parabellum High Power, not caliber 38, but, well, I guess that's close enough for military inspections. What do you think? Let's move on to the certificate here, the main certificate, and this is the larger certi certificate with which you're usually familiar. It doesn't have quite the same color tone as the um, narrow strip of tape paper, but you can see it is not white. What is white? Well, here's a white sheet by comparison. So if you're looking at a capture paper and the capture paper looks white, that's wrong. If the capture paper looks white with stains, that's wrong. If you see, and there are some blank certificates um, that are floating around, if you see some of these certificates with ballpoint ink, that's wrong. They're almost always folded. I mean, my gosh, these are almost 100 years old. 
and you have to kind of look at the ink and the ink is a little bit smeared. This is from a uh, just a standard manual typewriter. It's not an IBM Selectric and it's certainly not a, a printer as you know as you probably use in all of your businesses or, or, or personal mailings now. But in any event, let's look at the date and we can see that the release date is uh, 20 March 1946. It details the pistol. In this case, well, the serial number is not quite right again, is it? It's 41552, and it's not a B, and it's not a G. It's 415526. But again, it's kind of close enough. And you can see that it's signed in probably by a fountain pen by the commanding officer, and everything about this capture paper looks correct. We also have a little tag here. Look at that. Again, the same type of uh, faded uh, fountain pen ink. It mentions um, Albello. It gives the caliber. Well, we can't really see it now. It says caliber. It almost looks like 32 here. And look at this. The serial number, well, it's wrong once again. This is 454815. Well, maybe this is for a separate gun. So we say, okay, what's further down on this tag? Well, here we are. 41552. And it kind of looks like a G, not a B, but again, it's the wrong caliber, 38. But again, you can tell all the paperwork is consistent. It was probably all done in a hurry by people who are more used to 45 ACPs and not used to, you know, 9 millimeter parabellums. Or maybe they were hastily checking in and out a bunch of pistols in 32 caliber, which would be 7.65, or 380, which would be 9 millimeter Kurtz. But in any event, we certainly have three very official capture looking documents. Again, you look at the color tone of the paper, you look at the fading of the ink, and hopefully you're gonna be able to match up the name of the owner, hopefully that'll be spelled more or less correctly, and the serial number of the weapon. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully you've picked up a few tips when looking at Nazi era items, particularly those with capture papers. They really are interesting and add a lot of value to the final purchase. So with that in mind, Good hunting and good collecting.